Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Sorry about the delay. Um, welcome to anybody that's new to um, Now Intelligence Office Hours. We appreciate everyone that's coming and welcome back if you've been here before. So quick intro, so we are the outbound product team for Now Intelligence and we'd like to take some time every couple weeks and present a topic and then give you the customer the ability to ask some questions after that topic. So quickly we'll run through some logistics and then uh, we'll get started with today's presentation. So this is for you. Um, we like to talk about fresh ideas and, and better understanding for you and some practical guidance based on our topics that we go over and also, of course, by answering questions that you have. Uh, so just know that these sessions are for you, so make everything out of it that you possibly can. Uh, everyone is muted by default uh, during the Q&A. We may unmute you um, if we're discussing your question, if we need more uh, information from you in order to answer it. Uh, please utilize the Q&A to ask any questions that you have. Um, and I know the chat is there as well, but uh, Q&A is definitely the best spot uh, for those questions that you have. And we'll, you know, try to answer those as best we can. For any of the questions that may be a little bit deeper, that may take some more time, we may request that you actually put in a case in high uh, for us to follow that up. Um, so the meetings are being recorded. Someone not being able to, there we go, okay. Meetings are being recorded and those, we, we put those recordings out on the community um, for you to use and go back to any time that you would like. Uh, and also it will rec uh, list out the, the next recordings that we have uh, and then all of the previous ones we've had as well. So um, if recording uh, you is an issue with your organization, uh, now may be the best time for you to drop off. Uh, these are definitely recorded for future use. So next, um, what do you need help with, right? There is a community uh, article that we have out there we've, where we have asked that question. We wanna make sure that we're covering the topics that you need as the customer. Um, we obviously come up with topics ourselves, but we'd love to have some input from you all so we can actually make the, this time that you're you know, uh, dedicating to this time better for you. So please let us know any topics that you'd like to cover for us to cover in the future and we will definitely do that. So K20 labs are available in Now Learning and they are free. So please take advantage of these free labs. Uh, there's some really great labs out there that could help you um, and make Now Intelligence even stronger within your organization. So please take the time to go out there and register and enroll in some of those uh, K20 labs. Uh, the instances for those labs are spun up when you actually enroll. So all of that is taken care of. Uh, but please take advantage of that. Uh, like, again, like I said, there are some really great labs that are out there for you. So some recent blogs and articles that are out there in the community, um, and this will actually be uh, downloaded as a PDF that'll be attached to the recording that we have. So you don't necessarily have to remember these now, but if you wanna take note, um, some really great ones that are out there. So some knowledge demand insights, getting smarter and getting uh, about getting smarter, that is by Dan Grady, which is a really great um, product manager that we have within the, the company. He does some really great things. Uh, Orlando, some new and change analytics that maybe you're not necessarily aware of that are out there. Uh, so take a look at that. And then, of course, the last uh, office hours that we have, uh, we always create a blog for those. And that's where we actually put the, um, the recording and also the downloaded PDF. So that is out there as well. Um, and then which are always great ones, best practices and guidelines for ServiceNow performance analytics in general, which is always a great. And then building with confidence, uh, going over some customer interactive filters. And <clears throat> do you get asked this? Uh, let's talk about it, which is by David, who is on our team as well. So if you have the opportunity, please go out there and check out some of the recent blogs and articles that we have um, that are out there. And then some of the uh, questions that we have out there, um, it's actually not shown, but that's fine. Some of the questions that are out there and you, the way that you can get to those is by, um, there we go. There's some popular questions that uh, have been answered that are out in the community. Uh, you can find these uh, by going and filtering within the community uh, to the content list type uh, and then sort by recent or created or popular. And what we've done here is we've just listed out some of the more popular ones based on uh, views and replies that are out there. And all of these topics that you're seeing here are answered. So um, if you need those, you can definitely get to those uh, out in the community. So with that, uh, today's topic is querying multiple tables, uh, a legendary tale about related list conditions and database, database views. 
and it is by uh, Adam Stout, who himself does tell some great legendary tales. So with that, I'll pass it over to Adam. Thanks, Thomas. I just wanted to make you read that. Okay, <laughs> uh, so let me, uh, let me bring up that deck, and we'll get started. All right, uh, so let's, let's talk about what we're here for today. Uh, so we're gonna talk about querying multiple tables. And the focus on this is related list conditions and database views, but we're gonna take a little bit step back from that as well. Um, and I do wanna note, this was a specific request that came in um, from office hours um, and from that article where uh, customers asked us, what do they wanna, what would you like us to talk about? So this is direct feedback to what was asked for. Okay. So when we're talking about multiple tables, there are there's three basic ways that we're gonna uh, we're gonna query for multiple tables, and we're gonna talk about talk about all of them, like some of the trade offs and the goods and the bads. So first of all, there's just dot walking. On this call, I think most of us are, are experienced with dot walking, but I want to make sure we we compare these three and why I'd use one or the other. So we have dot walking, we have related list conditions, and then we have database views. They all allow us to query from multiple tables, but they do different things and they're, they're, they give us different pluses and minuses. So first of all, with dot walking, I can have multiple levels of reference. I can dot, dot walk and dot walk and dot walk and dot walk as far as I want. Effectively, there might be some performance issues, but um, if you add too many on there, but you can, there's no, there's no inherent limit to dot walking and anyone can do it. If you can access the instance, you can dot walk. Key thing here, we build from the bottom up. You start on the lowest place you want to be. That's your base table, and then you dot walk up. So I start on incidents, and then I can get caller, and I can get department. So if I want the department, the number of incidents by department, I start on incident, because that's what I want, and get the department. Then we have related list conditions, which, uses, which also uses references, but it references down. Um, it never took off, but my favorite term for this was moonwalking. Um, anybody can do this as well. It's in the report designer. Um, in this case, we start from the top and work down. Um, so we'll talk through some examples of those, but related list conditions and dot walking are very, very complementary. Um, but one builds bottom up related list conditions build top down. And then this, the, the third method we're going to talk about our database views. So database allows us to join data without a reference, which is very powerful and dot walking cannot do it. Related lists cannot do it. So if I need a database view, I need a database view. The database views, however, unlike the other two options that anybody can build, are built by any are built by admins. So it requires your admin to be involved to help me do it. And this, in this case, the data is done is then flattened and is side by side. So I'm not building from the bottom up or the top down. My data is all equal. Let's go a little bit more into, into detail about these. And as we're going, feel free to add anything in the QA. I have that open. So if I can address it, I can. Otherwise, when we're done, we'll We'll wrap up um, and answer those. So dot walking, let's talk about why I dot walk, what is dot walking. Um, so dot walking can be used for both visualization and filtering data. So both, uh, I can choose the columns or I can graph by a dot walked field, or I can put it in my conditions. That's important distinction uh, that comes up. So both visualizations and filtering. Any reference on the table, all references on the table are available. Um, so in this case, we're seeing on incident, I can go to caller. Caller has a reference to company. So I can keep going in any direction that I want to go to. Um, extended fields are available. And extended fields are things like if I'm on the task table, on the task table, I can, uh, I can get incident fields, even though incident is an extension of task. That's a system property. You'll see it in brackets or you'll see it in, in like a brownish red. Um, if you don't see that, then you want to search the documentation because there's a system property to allow that or not. Um, but we should be able to get extended fields in dot walking as well. Um, a very important note here is that dot walking effectively creates a join in the database. So um, one dot walk, two dot walks, that's fine. Joins are, are fine. Don't be afraid of them. Um, but if I were dot walking eight, nine, 10 levels through something, um, that is adding a lot of joins to the database. We might start seeing performance issues. The rule of thumb I've heard is three dot locks. Um, it's completely subjective. It depends what you're doing, how many rows, but understand that it, it is creating a join in the database. There, there is some performance cost that comes from it. 
Um, and again, the good side here, created by the report creator um, in list views as well. Um, anybody can do it. There's no restrictions. You can't actually restrict dot walking. Um, it's, it's built into the platform for us. Um, a question did come up and I'll, I'll ring up about catalog variables. So catalog variables, uh, and there's, there's two parts of this. So I, I'm not, I believe we don't allow dot walking from catalog variables if it's, if it's a reference. Um, in different parts of the systems, it behaves a little bit differently. And it depends if you're in, um, you definitely want to be in report designer. Um, if you, uh, if you want to do catalog variables, if we are, um, uh, yeah, the catalog variables are available in the, in the report designer, there's improvements happening in that area. Um, but there, it's not a straight dot walk. Um, they're just, it's, it's special, some, something like keywords. Okay, um, and then as we talked about the, the dot walking, um, this is the schema browser. I believe only admins can see this, but just to give you an idea, um, when you're dot walking, you have in the normal drop downs, you have access to the fields on the table. You have access to extended, the fields on, from extended tables, and you have access to fields that table from tables that are extended. Um, so if we see in here on the incident, uh, form or an incident uh, on this incident table. I have access to the columns that are available in incident, but I also have access to the columns that I inherited from task, which is what incident extended. And if we, uh, and we'll see the same thing here um, that if I was, if I'm on, on service offering, I get my services, which extended configuration item, which extended base configuration. I'm able to get these and all basically all of these fields are going to be accessible. Um, in, in different ways. So you have the fields on the table, the extended tables and the extensions, uh, the, the fields from extended tables, if you have that system property enabled. All right, so that's our intro into dot walking and I'm just gonna recap uh, the questions right now. Um, there is a question about list V3, which we'll, we'll bring up. So relate, uh, in this, this goes into related list conditions as well. Um, list V3 um, exists. Um, if you have it, that's fine. If you don't, don't go to it. There, there are, there's some really cool things in List V3, but there, there's some performance issues that can, that can arise for some users. Um, a lot of the UI stuff, if we look into workspace and we look into the, into the future, some of the things that are happening in the UI, there's a tremendous tremendous amount of work being put into the UI right now, which you're seeing in, in some of the workspaces and you'll see more of over the next few releases. So look for a, a lot of improvements. Um, what's, I can't talk about what's specifically there, but there is a huge um, effort being uh, put in to, to updating and um, combining and making a more harmonious experience uh, dealing with all of these things. Okay, so let's get into related list conditions. So we, we, most of you know about dot walking, we've talked about dot walking, related list conditions. So related list conditions um, are not available in list V2. Um, you can't see them on the list. If you're on list V3, you actually do see them. Um, we're gonna focus in on the report designer. In the report designer, you'll see this option about re related list conditions. Um, also the dot walking experience in, related, in report designer is much cleaner um, than, than in the report builder. If you're using the report builder, you don't get related list conditions. You need, you need to use the report designer. And while you can switch back and forth, if you are using the report designer, you have a related list condition and you switch back to report builder and save it, you'll end up wiping out your report, uh, your related list condition. So once you start using a, rel a related list condition on a specific report, you need to stay in designer. Okay. Uh, so a couple of the highlights from here, it only returns the tables from the primary field. So in this case, we're looking at um, uh, the, a report on the, prime, on the problems table, and I'm actually looking, there is no related list condition here, which is, this is not a great example. We'll, we'll go through some more in detail. The only fields that are gonna be returned are from the problem table in this case. That, that's the table I selected. That's the table I'm gonna get fields from. The related list condition table has no impact on the actual fields that are returned. So this is a big difference from dot walking. Second, only one related list condition is available. That's what the UI restricts us to. Um, there is an encoded query format for this, but even if you built an encoded query with two, it only looks at the first one. 
So you can only use one related list condition per, per query. It also only supports one level of reference. So I can't uh, go from, uh, I can't go through multiple references. The tables here, the only things that are gonna show up here are the direct references to, in this case, the problem table. Um, just because, uh, well, it's a related list condition, that's what we called it, but it's a reference condition is probably a better term. Even if the form doesn't have the related list, that doesn't matter. We're gonna show you everything in the system that references problem. So it doesn't actually have to be a related list on the problem form to show up here, just to be aware. As long as it is a direct reference to problem, it will show up. And the conditions, conditions is absolutely correct. This is not adding field to this, it's not a join to this. It's just added, adding an additional condition to what I have up here. So if I, in this case, if I was doing state is open, it's gonna give me problems where the state is open and it is always anded and my related list condition uh, has to match as well. Uh, this again, it's recorded, it's available in report designer and the report creator, the person working in designer can, can add a related list condition. The admins are not involved. We're just using the references that are there. So let's go through, let's go through a couple of examples, some use cases where I'm gonna to wanna to use related list conditions. So the first one is show me in CIs with more, uh, with two or more related incidents. Um, and I'm actually looking at uh, recent incidents. So I have a, a report that is based on CMDB CI on configuration item. I'm not putting any conditions on my CIs. I want any CI where this is true. And I want it where the incident configuration item has been created in the last 30 days. So I'm, what I'm doing down here is saying, give me all the incidents that have been created in the last 30 days, join that to the, combine it with the CMDB CI table and add this additional clause. So all CIs, all CIs um, that have incidents on the configuration item, that, that looking at the configuration item that exists. And this is actually highlighted wrong. This is saying no. Um, that should be, that's just wrong. Um, in this case, this actual condition is going to, is going to give me all the CIs that do not have an incident created in the last 30 days, because this is no incidents where the, where the configuration item is, is here. Um, this should have, this no should have actually been two or more, um, or greater than one, two or more or greater than one. And clicking on the word no will let you change that setting. Let's go to an example and hopefully I get it right. This is the example I wanted to show now. Um, this is CIs with no outages in the last 60 days. So again, all my CIs, there's no filter on the CI. I could filter by class. I could filter by owner. I can filter by whatever I want to on the CI table. But then I'm going to say where the outage table, the configuration item on the outage table is this. So I'm getting all the CIs with no outages. I have the wrong screenshots in here in the last 60 days. So in this case, it's actually going to show me no outages within the last, uh, no outages at all. So all the CIs with no outages ever, because I have not put any conditions on the configuration item, on the outage related list condition. Okay, and now I got one that I think is correct. Uh, so as we go through here, what we're seeing, active changes with no active change tasks. So this is something that's really challenging. It was very difficult to do without related list conditions. So what I'm looking for is changes. I want changes, I don't want no changes, I don't want multiple changes. I want changes that do not have an active change task. So it's, it gets to be a little interesting in here that I'm not doing one or more change tasks, but I'm looking for no active change tasks. As a note, one of the things I, common issues I see is that um, I, I see people put in one or more non-active change tasks, right? Where active is false. And, and we got to make sure you look at the logic correctly. I want no active change tasks, which is very different than one or more inactive change tasks. So if you're not getting the results you expect, make sure you take a look at uh, your logic on, on what's coming through. Uh, okay. Uh, all, again, all three references. Uh, a question ha has come in about comparing data sets. So give me everything in data set A that's not in data set B. Um, that doesn't work here. Um, it doesn't work with related list conditions. Uh, we might be able to do something like that with a join. Uh, I probably end up doing something with a script or, or a, a dynamic filter. But th these are some great use cases that come through with 
uh, with related list conditions. Again, I want two or more. If I were doing that with a database view, I'd have to join and then I have to count and I'd manually have to go look for it. This allows me to, to get a having clause. Um, so a, a very important question, uh, another very important question came in about, do you have to say what the field joins on? Um, how, how does it know? It knows by what I'm selecting in the related list condition field. Um, that's bottom box. Uh, so what this is saying in this example we're seeing here is that I want change requests and change task references change request. So the related list part of the, of the name comes from, it must be a reference to the main table. You choose which one. So if I were doing um, assigned to, if I, if I was doing sys user, which actually let's go to my next, my next example. So if I'm doing sys user on sys user, I have a, a incident task assigned to. I have, in, I have incident assigned to, call, uh, incident caller, incident, whatever I want to have in there. Um, all the references to sys user that are on, well, in this case, they're actually anywhere in the system can come up, but also, red flag, we're looking, um, everything that's there that is a reference, and it has to be a reference that, that comes in and that is there. So it's automatic because it's, we're reading the references that are there. So the last example I, I wanted to bring in um, had to do with uh, uh, breakdown sources. So I use break, the, my biggest use case for related list conditions are breakdown sources, right? We're talking about performance analytics. Um, we, have break, we have related list conditions available in report designer, but also in indicator sources and breakdown sources. I don't often use them in indicator sources, but breakdown sources I do because I want to have sys user, but in sys user, I have 100,000 users. I don't want to show 100,000 users when I want to sign to. Um, one of the options that I have is to, I can create my breakdown source on incident and then distinct out the assigned to fields. That, that is an option. Um, it can cause some performance issues when you write it that way, um, with, when we're having to distinct out what comes through. The way that I prefer to do it is by creating my breakdown source on sys user the field is sys ID. I have all my conditions that on sys users that I want. They need to be active, um, and and I want them to be. For me, I want them to work at service now, because all assigned to people have to be active and have to be assigned uh, work at service now. Um, and then I use a related list condition that says in the incident task they've had an incident task in the last six months. What this allows me to do is not look at roles. Alternatively, I can look at roles to say, well, who who or departments to see who might have an assigned to. What this shows me though, is that for all the people who work uh, at my company, I'm even if they know, even if they changed teams last week, they're going to show up in my breakdown for six months. E maybe I assigned it to somebody outside of that. It doesn't matter. All I'm looking for is users that have actually had an incident in the last six months. They will be part of my breakdown, my breakdown source. So this helps me tune up my breakdown source to be just as small as it can be. Um, without leaving anybody out. And I do want to make another note here. The conditions do matter. So we are going to, we are going to end up doing a full table or a scan of sys user. Um, so the, uh, you do want to tune this up, even though active or like the company may not actually be important because I'm only going to pick up people in the related list condition that work at service, uh, again, work at service now work at my company. Um, by putting that here, I can, I can filter this list first and then we'll join this in you do get better performance the smaller the the smaller the big table is the, the driving table is don't leave filters out of there that you could still use but this just gives me an extra set of anded conditions uh, as complicated as i want them to be um, and also we talked about this can only be one level so i only have access to incident assigned to incident task assigned to i do not have access to incident task dot assigned to dot manager Related list conditions only do one level, do only do direct references, and they do not let you do multiple dot walks um, inside of there. Okay, so I got a couple questions that we're gonna talk about before we move on to database view. So let me, let me go through them quickly. So one that came up is, can related list conditions be used for interactive filters? So out of the box, no. Um, that, it's an enhancement that's, that's in the queue right now um, to be able to allow you to, to define interactive filters with related list conditions. Um, we're looking to change that out of the box. Um, so that, that is something that's, that's certainly, uh, 
of all of our safe harbor stuff, nothing is done till it's done. Uh, don't make any purchasing decisions on this, but it's something we're working at that was pointed out. Um, actually, as we were, uh, that, that's been pointed out as being worked on. Um, you can change that though. Any place we have conditions, there is an attribute that lets you turn on um, condition builder V2. So the related list conditions come in condition builder V2. And if you look at the attributes for this condition field compared to the conditions on interactive filters, you'll see that there's an additional attribute here to turn this on. And even when you're turning on condition V2, you have to say, I want related list conditions as well. Um, but if you look at the attributes for this dictionary field and you apply that to interactive filters today, it would work fine. Um, it, it is just part of an encoded query string and it's just a UI setting on what you see. So if that's something you need to do and it's gonna provide a lot of value, which I think it does provide a lot of value, um, you can make that change today on your instance. Um, you need your admins to do it, of course, because it's a dictionary change. And at some point you probably wanna back out your customization because that will be the default. Um, Uh, so another, uh, another question came in is if I wanted to see the amount of SLAs run on a specific incident. Um, could I do that with, with an RLC on, on incident? Um, so I believe you can, like, I want to see all, uh, it, well, I'm, it's not related to this condition. doesn't show you the amount. If you want to see the amount, you're going to need something else. Um, but if you are, and I think actually a dot walk is, would be fine, or you could report on incident SLA, but either way. Um, what a related list condition would let you do is say, give me all of my incidents that have had five or more SLAs applied, that have five or more active SLAs or non-canceled SLAs. That, that could be something I want to see because something's going a little off there. So I should be able to do a related list condition from task SLA uh, to assign to. I, I'm actually not sure on top of my head if, if S, a task SLA is available if I'm looking at incident. Um, it should be if my report was on task and I did the class of incident, I, I, I have to look, maybe we'll have time a little bit later. Um, uh, but it does need a direct reference. So I'll point out task SLA, uh, task SLA references task. So again, from if my main table is task, I should have it there. Um, I'm unclear on incident off the top of my head. Um, but it, uh, the other related question to that is metrics. Metrics are not available here. Views are not available because they're not direct references. Um, metrics use a doc ID field, and so they're not available he here either. It must be a reference in the table, um, which covers most cases, but specifically Spotlight, um, Metrics, they use doc ID fields, they don't, uh, and, and views often, so they're not available in related list conditions. Um, and I will, um, uh, another question came up um, from me running my big mouth about the dictionary change. Um, I will put a link uh, when we put the recap in, I'll, I'll look for that in the documentation of, of what goes in. Um, I, I am not, it might be listed in the documentation. Uh, I'm not sure, not all attributes always are listed. Um, but if you go look at this form, uh, if you go look at the, at the breakdown source form and view the conditions, uh, view the attributes on this conditions field, you'll see them. Um, and that's true across anything. If there's ever a field that's working differently, uh, a dictionary or different field types, all there's several different attributes, most of which uh, can control the UI. So if you ever have two fields that look the same, go look in the dictionary, um, go get a developer instance, right? You can go look at the developer instance, you can go look at them, look at the, at the, the dictionary record for that field and you'll see the attributes. Um, so it's very easy to, to take a look and see what's there. Um, and then what I'll often do is go look at an attribute and then go search the documentation for that attribute or search the community. Often it will come up. Um, not, they're not all documented, but they're, they're all there if you look at them. Um, so, uh, but I, if I can find that documentation, I'll add it in the, uh, a link in the recap. Okay. All right. So that's related list conditions. So we talked about dot walking. We've talked about related list conditions, very complimentary. Again, I'm going to go for it. You got dot walking and moonwalking. It's been like three years and nobody's picked that up, but somebody will appreciate that. Uh, so let's talk about database views. So they're different, right? And they're not, these are not all things we can switch out. They're not all equal. They have different benefits for us. So a database view allows us to join tables without a reference. Both dot walking, follow the references, related list conditions show you what's available based off of references, but database views allow me to join tables 
that don't actually have a reference. Um, a very important note uh, for those of us with, with SQL backgrounds, database views are about joining tables. They're not about unioning data. We do not, there's no way to union data in, in uh, ServiceNow. Um, we get into the extension model and how you accomplish that with your database design so that you never actually have to union, but database views do not add a table A, do not add rows for table A and table B. They simply join row, the rows together for A, uh, a and B. Um, these are created by admins or delegated admins. I'm gonna bring that up as we talk about uh, scoped apps. Even if you're not an admin on your system, maybe you can get a scoped app that allows you to create some of these views. Um, so delegated administration would allow me to create, view, could allow me to create views. Uh, but you do need an admin or a delegated admin to do this. Uh, report admin's not gonna cut it. General user's not gonna be able to do it as well. Um, the common uses for database view, the common reasons why you should create a database view or you need to use a database view, a document ID field. So generally our references um, are going to come through uh, a certain field in the dictionary. We say this field references this table, assigned to references sys user. Department, uh, uh, user department references the department table. But there are some tables that are very multi-use, multi-purpose tables. And the examples are metric instance and spotlight. Those can reference any table in the system. So they, they actually, instead of having a reference, have two fields. They have a table field and they have a doc ID field, which is a sys ID. Um, it is a sys ID, we can, we can get to it, but you can't dot walk through it. So the way we handle that is we create a database view that joins the base table, incident, um, SLA, change, whatever the case is, to metric instance on the doc, on the doc ID field. So um, there's a very special case. They're generally just out of box tables. I don't see very many custom tables using doc ID fields um, and, and we're set. A, a very important note here is that task SLA is not a doc ID field. Task SLA references task. So I generally can get all of my, um, everything I need out of task SLA, dot walking to change, dot walking to project, dot walking to incident. There are views for it. Um, I'm actually not sure why we have incident SLA, uh, incident SLA as a view. Um, it's fine, it's nice, but task SLA will allow me to dot walk through all these things. Um, so as I talk about this, the, some of these best practices that of what, here's when I need it, um, some of our really old tables were created or really old views were created before we had related list conditions, before we had um, uh, some, of the, some of the dot walking that comes through. So don't, don't judge everything based on what you see, and especially something that was created 10 years ago or, or older. Um, but this is what I want to do database view. If I'm using a doc ID, you got to use a database view. If I'm going through multiple, multiple M to M tables, then you need a database view because you can't dot walk up and down and up and down. However, if I'm only going through a single M to M, I'm going to dot walk on that single M to M and that's where I'm going to start my report. So if I wanted, um, uh, it depends on your system, but if I had incidents to problems where a problem can have multiple incidents and it, an incident can have multiple problems, uh, I believe generally we don't do that, but if I were going to do that, I wouldn't report on incident or problem. I would report on incident problems, an M to M table, and then dot walk to get the incident, dot walk to get the problem. So make sure you're think uh, as we talk about build up uh, from the top down or bottom up, well, there are certain cases, if I'm using an M to M table, I want to report on an M to M table with dot walking and I don't need a view to join um, incident to incident problem to problem. I can just dot walk from incident problem. Third case is non-reference tables. Um, I generally, we generally want to fix the, the data uh, to use the reference, but there are certain cases. If I, if I wanted to get the, uh, I wanted to be able to join on the uh, user that, cre that's, that created records, who, uh, yeah, let's say that, that created reports. Well, or up, last updated report. So updated user is not a field on sys user, but I have um, the sys updated by as a string. Well, I can join that, which is a username, not a sys ID, not a reference, but I can take updated by on, on sys report and join that to sys user on username. So I'm not, jo I'm not using a reference. I can't dot walk, but I can create a view that joins those because that gives me essentially what I want. You might get some issues because of users that have been deleted or something that's out of the box, but ostensibly it will give you what you want. 
So I can join if I have a non-reference table. And whether that's joining, um, you'll see this commonly now, if I'm joining task type to sysdb object, or I'm joining um, sys class name from CMDB CI, sys class name to sysdb object, the, the sys class type and uh, task type are strings, but there is a real record that has that and I can join to sysdb object and, and then I can, I can get a sys ID for that. So you'll see that in some of the PA stuff that we're doing. Um, and if you have a non-reference table, then that's what you need to do. But if this is a custom table, make sure you're looking to see, um, uh, make sure you're, you're, you're really scrutinizing the data model to go, should this just be a reference? Can this be a reference rather than copying a string? Um, sorry, the other example uh, that, that came in, and I, I wanna acknowledge this, um, that document IDs are used in surveys. So a survey can, can exist against any object, um, not just tasks. If it was just tasks, we'd probably do a reference to task, but it can exist to, against any object in the database. You can survey based off of CI or service. You can, sur you can survey based off of task. So it uses a document ID field. So to get any meaningful data out of your surveys, you're gonna create views, right? So metrics, you need views. Spotlight, you need views. Uh, those should be created. Uh, surveys, you're going to want to create views based off of what is being surveyed. So if I'm survey, surveying based off of service, then you're going to want a view that does uh, surveys, service survey. If I'm joining on incident, I want something like incident survey. Um, surveys and what you're doing can be a little challenging, um, but ostensibly you're going to create a view that is, is going to flatten that out for you. Okay, um, there are some other edge cases that come up where I need a, I need a single table view for some cases. I had one yesterday that came up. Um, somebody wanted to allow users, they, they wanted to control the fields that a user, that users could see in the condition builder um, and not for security, but just because it, let's say it was like task. There were a hundred fields and the user only wanted to look at 10 of them. They created a database view and they named database used by default show you all the fields in the table, but you can actually say in this view, I only want these 10 fields. So they were able to create a view to, to create a better user experience for a portal where the condition builder only showed those 10 fields. They were only those 10 fields could be available in the condition builder. Only those 10 fields were only available um, in the columns. So again, some special edge cases that happen specifically with single table views. Um, they're, they're rare, but they, they do come up. So you might see those. So those are the four cases where I see database views and, and you gotta use a database view. Um, in big red at the top, um, if I see a view that has no left joins and, there's, and they're all reference fields, they're all going field A equals sys ID, field B equals sys ID. I am generally gonna wanna be using just dot locking. I don't wanna create a view that I can just simply dot lock for. There's no benefit to that. Um, generally, because now I have a view and I have to just, my user has to know, do I use the view or do I use the table or what do I do? Um, there's no performance gain. There's no performance gain because dot locking does the same thing that views are going to do in the background. So if all I'm doing is straight equivalences to sys IDs uh, and there's no left join, then I'm going to want to, I want to, I'm going, generally going to want to dot lock. Uh, okay. So make sure you have that. And actually the other point in here too is database views can left join um, they don't right join, so just write your table differently, but they can left join um, or inner join. The default is that they're inner joins. Uh, we do not cross join. So again, if those of us with the SQL background, we want to cross join, you cannot do that, right? Everything is, it's object oriented. So you can inner join or left join, but you cannot cross join. And no unioning or intersects or any of those set operations. Okay. Um, so, uh, uh, we're saying that we need admin to do this. Let's talk about, talk about a question that comes up very regularly, which is um, my admin doesn't want to create a database view. And I want to ask them why. So the, and, and this, the last thing I talked about is the same, whether I have a database view or I dot walk, the performance is the same. Um, if you're, if you have a performance issue from a view, which you might, if I'm joining tons and tons of things together, well, you have a business problem. So then we need to talk about optimization. We need to talk about maybe denormalizing some data, adding some business rules, creating some shortcut references. That stuff's all fine, but the view itself is not a performance issue. So if I have to join 
uh, many, many tables together, then we have to look at my data model to go, why is that? Can I create a direct reference? Can I skip some of these tables by putting a business rule in? Um, so there is a bigger issue, but just simply, I don't want views. Um, I don't want views either that I don't need, but if it's one of these things, I, I need to solve my business problem, right? This is what the answer is. So if, if my doc ID field or my survey or whatever it's going to be is, a, is, is an issue, then I need to look at performance tuning and tuning my app for analytics, but inherently the view by itself shouldn't matter. Um, like joining on the doc ID field, it's just what you have to do. So uh, if there are specific questions or you have, or you have performance issues, that might be something you'd want to ask in the community or put a, a case in on high. Um, but there's no inherent performance hit by using a database view. Um, I'm much more concerned about user experience, about having all these database views that just aren't doing anything. Um, and and I, I see that often, right? People think I need to join, and so I use a view. The whole point of this discussion is we actually can use dot walking for most of what we want. Related list conditions allow me to, um, there, there were some use cases like the not in, where you used to have to create a database view and do a left join and then query where this field was null. You just don't have to do that stuff anymore. Um, and so between dot walking and related list conditions, we should have um, negated the need for views quite a bit. Uh, and so make sure we, we, you know, we can come back to this presentation and talk about that, talk about these use cases. Um, but, and the, the common reasons for database views, I don't have an answer to how you get around them other than using a, a database view. So don't be afraid, but don't, don't make database views your first go-to. All right, let's talk about a couple of views, a couple of examples. So the same thing, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the examples. So here is a big nasty view. Some of you who are reading the community might've seen this one. Um, I posted this screenshot uh, last week, I think. So in this case, what we're trying to do is get the list of reports that are on a dashboard. List of reports on a dashboard. There's a lot of steps in between. So we had to get, uh, I actually don't have dashboard on here because I don't need it. I, I am getting uh, the M to M for dashboard tabs. So that has dashboard. I can dot walk to get dashboard. So I don't need to join it in here because the join's going to run every time and I don't need it for like the, for the name. But if I needed dashboard owner, I can always dot walk to dashboard owner. Okay. I don't need to have another straight equivalency. But what I had to do here was get my dashboard tab. So I get the dashboard, get the tab information from the tab information. I can get the portal record. By the way, I do understand how convoluted this is, but here's an example of where I did have to use it. Um, and then we're going to do, uh, we're going to join to the portal page, the portal page, I'm going to get the preferences and I actually need to get two preferences. The sys portal preferences is a value pair, um, record set. It's all value pairs for all the configurations on your dashboard, or all the, all the widgets. So I need to get the ones that are reports. And then if it's a report, I want to get the sys ID. Those are stored as two different rows. Um, I join those together and then I get sys report. I need to join in sys report here. Um, because dashboard on dashboard tabs is a reference, but preferences, it's just a string that I do, I know is a sys ID, but it's just a string field. So I have to, uh, this, this is my doc ID equivalence. I have to join that to sys report and because that reference doesn't exist uh, in the system, but logically it exists. So here I had to do, um, because I had value pairs, because I have uh, M to M's involved and because I have that doc ID field, I needed to do a view for this. Um, and I don't have it in here, but what this gives me is just a list of all the dashboards and all the reports that exist on the dashboards. So I can say, give me, show me all the reports on this dashboard. And I can say on this dashboard, sorry, on this report, give me all the dashboards it shows up on. Very useful to have uh, in terms of change control. So that's, I'm going through the value pairs there. Uh, doc ID. So this is a straight doc ID. Uh, this is task assessment detail, which I think was a question that came up. Um, so in this case, I have my task assessment detail. Uh, I had to join task and the assessment trigger ID. Trigger ID is a document ID field. So I'm joining the task sys ID to the trigger ID, which is, which is a sys ID, but can reference any table, not just reference. Um, uh, okay, we'll get to that. All right, so there, there's my doc ID example. And now I have non-reference. So my non-reference here, these are rare. These should not happen in, in, in um, this should not happen very often, but they do happen in system tables or if I were doing something like sysid. Uh, so for sysid, uh, sorry, not like sysid, for sysclassname. Sysclassname is a string. Um, 
update fi update name is a, a string. This is an out of the box uh, example that I found. And because uh, sys history log and sys update, it's not a reference, but logically it's joined by a file name and update name. That's I have to use this view. So I can't dot walk from uh, one to the other, but I can create this view and then I can get my upgrade history update XML. Um, so because I'm not joining on sys, uh, on sys ID, I'm joining on a field name, that's, that's what I get. I always question if I see this to go, why don't we just have a reference? Why do we have to do it by name? Why, why don't we have a reference? Um, there's probably a good reason for that, but I actually don't know why this is and why it's not a reference. Um, so make sure you ask that when you see it, but if you need to do it, this is, that is, you, you have to do it. There's no get, way of getting around it um, inherently. And then M to M tables. So here I have sys user has skill as an M to M between skill and user and um, group members. So I wanna know what group members have what skill. The very reasonable, this is again out of the box. Um, so I am joining M, the M to M sys user as skill and sys user group member based off of user, which is, sys, which is a sys ID. An interesting thing here to point out, this is optimized because it's just joining my two tables. If I want user information from both uh, user as skills and group member, I, have act, I can dot walk to user. It's the same answer either way. And I have skill, I can dot walk to skill. For group, let's say group manager, I want a group manager. I can dot walk from group to group manager. So I don't have to have sys user skill and, and um, sys user group join in this view because I have access to those dot walking. So very important. We just want to have the tables that don't have dot walking available. If I join those five in there, I would be joining those five every time I run this view. And in this case, I only actually have to run these two and only if I actually dot walk to group manager or user department, would I have to add that extra view, add that extra table in my join. So performance can matter. Make sure you're optimizing for what wants to happen. But again, I got two M to Ms. There is no way you can dot walk through these. You can't dot walk from skill to user because skill user, you can't go to member or to group from group, I can't get to skill because I have to go up to user and then back down. Okay. Um, we have a couple questions that we will get to, but now it is quiz time. I'm not going to turn you off mute, but I want you to think about these as we go through. Okay. So hopefully this build works. Okay. What should you use? So think to yourself, if I am looking for an incident, I want a report on incidents. And I want to show the caller's department. I want to have the number of incidents based and grouped by the caller department. What do I use? Dot lock. Okay. I want changes with no open tasks, right? What, what's going on with this change if there's no tasks? There's always got to be a task or something's stuck, something's broken. So I'm looking for a change with no task. I'm going to use a related list condition, right? Just show me the changes. I don't care about the tasks. I just want... Yes, task, no task, but I want to see those, uh, those changes. Problems with one or more incidents. Um, and maybe I'm not going to do one or more incidents, but I want to know my problem. I'm going to do my problems that have five or more incidents, right? I got to tackle five or more incidents. And maybe I want P, uh, P1, P2 problems with five or more incidents. What am I going to use? A related list condition. Again, I'm looking for those problems and I'm just adding a condition about the incidents. I don't care about the incidents. Care about the problems, um, and you could also enhance that in your in the conditions for the related list condition to say only where I only want incidents that have P ones, I only want incidents that, uh, problems with two or with one or more P ones or P twos, but I don't care about all of them. So very very quick, just show me the problems with the related list condition. I want to know about skills needed for an incident, so I'm going to look at task M to M uh, a task. M to M skills, so which tasks do I need to, to work on this incident? For this, we're gonna need just dot walking. I'm gonna go to task M, M to M skill, and I can dot walk to task, I can dot walk to skill. I don't need a view, I don't need a related list condition. Incident metrics with a current assignment group, with the current assignment group. So I, I need to, I wanna get how long, um, uh, by assignment group, how long things are sitting in pending. Very common ask. And to get this, I am going to need a database view. So I need to build a view because incident metrics, um, metrics, metrics are stored in metric, instant, uh, uh, metric instance. And I need to join that to incident so I can get the current assignment group from the incident. And then I get the metrics 
from incident inc metric instance. And all incidents and all changes assigned to me. So this is a bit of a challenging one, but all incidents and all changes assigned to me, it's a very common ask. And so we have people talk, asking about views and joining incidents and changes, but that's not the right way to do this. If I need to get all incidents and all changes assigned to me, I'm going to, I'm going to create a report on task. And when I have the report on task, I'm going to use dot walking to get my extended fields from incident and extended changes if I need them. So uh, we brought this up really briefly earlier. Views don't handle unions, but ostensibly everything we're looking for is a task or it's a thing, right? It's a CI. So if you need to union, we're going to probably go down to task or, or wherever the common extension is for those tables. If I'm unioning incidents and changes and requests and project tasks, at the, at the end of it, they're all tasks. So I can get that from task and I never need to union. This is not necessarily the case if I, uh, if I got off, if I didn't use my extension model correctly, if I have a database problem, but incidents, changes, requests, problem tasks, um, all those things extend task. I'm just gonna report on task and dot walk using extended fields if I needed to. And I wanna get all reports on a dashboard. Hopefully we can answer this one pretty quickly since we spent a couple minutes on it and I need a database view, right? There's some just interesting, exciting stuff in there. So I need a database view for that. Okay, so uh, we've, we've talked about a bunch of things. We talked about dot walking related list conditions. We talked about database views. Um, here's the cheat sheet to get to the documentation. Um, there's a, a article from a couple of years ago that walks through a bunch of things you can do with related list conditions if you want to play with that some more. Um, and also when we get into dynamic filters and kind of how do I augment related list conditions, how to do more and if I need more. So there's a great, great article in that. Um, and then there is a lab. Uh, if you go into advanced reporting, if you want to build a lab and walk through that, again, all those knowledge labs are available. Um, if you go to now learning, uh, you can take this class specifically the database views are handled in this section of advanced reporting. Uh, great lab all around. Um, you can spin up an instance, you can do it. Uh, but that one section talks about what we talked about today. Uh, okay. Um, I am, and I am going to add uh, the link to the attribute if I can find that in documentation. Um, if not, you know how to find it now. Um, and then the, the uh, reporting on a dashboard, I'll throw that in there as well. Um, it, it walks through kind of the discussion. Um, and some of this, some of this presentation came from that discussion. So uh, I apologize for talking long. This is a lot of, there's a lot of stuff in here and I wanted to make sure we covered it thoroughly. Um, but now let's, let, we can answer some of your questions. Um, we have a few minutes. One did come up about, uh, we talked about uh, reports on dashboards. Um, and again, that, that's really useful. Um, the question that follows up, and I'm surprised I only got this once, was what about indicators and breakdowns? Uh, indicators and breakdowns are a lot more challenging because indicators can be nested. Reports can't be nested. Um, so there's a direct mapping and a view works. If you need to see the indicators uh, and breakdowns that are used on a dashboard, um, you can do that in the tree view. Um, so if you go into your dashboard, I believe you can do the dependency viewer. Um, I think it's called the dependency viewer. Um, but if uh, you, you'll see that, that there is a tree view that lets you see where things are used. Um, the, a very, uh, if you want to put that in the idea portal, but it is something we're, we're being actively worked on. Um, it's not in Paris, but we are trying to get you more information. Um, we hear you very loud and clear that we need some more dependency tools. Um, so you'll see some of the stuff come out there like that, that article about here's how you can do it for reports. Um, but we do want to get you more management tools and that that's something that's very near and dear to my heart. Um, so we're going to get some of those tools out for you. Um, we're looking to get some, some of that stuff out, show you how to build it in the short term. Um, so we might be talking about that in, in, uh, uh, in some future office hours, how to do some of these things that will help you manage what you have today. Uh, but in the future direction of the product, we are looking at how to build that stuff in better for you. So not just that it does it, but how do you manage it? So specifically for the audience uh, on this call. Okay, uh, yes, and go hit the idea portal. If anybody has any other questions, um, yeah, okay. Um, I, we do have some articles in the community. One came up about catalog variables because variables, it is a challenge. Um, we will, uh, uh, there is a, there's an article on that in the community. I will look and see if I can find that and add that both to, or add that to the, to the community post for this, the recap. Um, if not, if you search in it, you'll see it. Um, ostensibly what you end up doing is creating a view. So whether I'm doing PA or reporting, um, you're gonna create those views. And if you get the view right for your catalog variables, you're in good shape. Um, catalog variables are really nice for, for throwaway things like t-shirt size. 
um, mem you know, memory size or something like that on just what comes through and what's transactional. Um, but they're very problematic reporting. Um, there's improvements coming, but the way I, I, I handle it when it comes up for me is that I create views to flatten my data uh, that might be specific to, to a, uh, a catalog item. Um, a catalog item, I, have to, I get those variables, I'll do multiple joins, and then I, it makes it easy to report on. But the more you do in that view and make it report friendly, the better off you are. Okay, if anybody else has anything, uh, we're wrapping up time-wise. Uh, oh, I had other questions. Okay, um, I see one in here. Oh, no, good, I got answered. Okay, so a lot of, a lot of requests for the report on dashboard. I will send that out. Um, I am looking to put, put together a little bit more um, information on that, but in that community article, which you'll see later today, if you look for it now, you'll see it, but I'll, I'll put that in the links. Um, I have, there's some more detail in there about what you need to do and particularly the text that's cut off. Okay. I got it, Adam. You got it? All right. Yeah, I got it. So again, thank you for uh, everyone that was able to uh, attend office hours today. Thank you, Adam, for uh, going through all of that, those great things with the related list, the database views, and so on with us. Um, so some real quick things before we go. If I can get my screen right. There we go. Sorry about that. So again, all of these sessions uh, are out in the community. Uh, once uh, this gets put into a blog, Adam will have that out there and you'll be able to access that and all of those great links that he shared. And again, all of the previous ones are out there as well. Uh, so please utilize those um, as well. Uh, so next, uh, next office hours, uh, I, Thomas Davis, will actually be doing an office hours on using the CMDB query builder to use for uh, reporting. So uh, hopefully that is exciting for some of you that are on the call, if not all of you, and you'll be back. Uh, tell your friends, neighbors, everybody. And uh, we will go over that on the next office hours. Uh, so again, uh, please remember that we do need your help. So uh, if there's anything that you would like to see uh, in a future office hours, please let us know so we can make it, um, you know, these, these times work for you and the things that you're trying to uh, do within your organization. And don't forget about the K20 labs. Again, they are free and they're available in now learning. Uh, take advantage of those and all of the great things that come with those uh, labs. And uh, until next time, make sure that you utilize the community, uh, ask questions that you have out there. Uh, you are more than welcome to tag um, Adam uh, Stout or myself, Thomas Davis, or also uh, David. Uh, he is part of our team as well. So if there's a question that you have, uh, you can tag us or just generally ask the community in general. There are a lot of people uh, out there that um, are very knowledgeable that could possibly answer your question as well. And uh, try to use screenshots when uh, possible does make answer the question uh, easier. And again, catch up on previous topics that have been out there for office hours uh, and suggest some ones for the future. Uh, and then of course the idea portable portal, which uh, Adam talked about, if there's anything um, that you would like to see uh, in future releases of the incidents as it relates to now intelligence or anything else within the platform, uh, please put in an idea in the idea, idea portal and get that into a queue to be looked at. Um, and again, like I said, Knowledge 20 is still available. Uh, so there's some great things out there, nine PA and, and reporting labs and a CreatorCon lab that is out there free um, as well. So with that, um, I believe that we are done. So uh, thank you for joining us. Sorry we went over by one minute and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you. <laughs>